Good morning. Welcome to worship, everyone. As we gather together today on this, the fourth Sunday in the season of Lent, it's also, this Sunday is also known as Joy Sunday, Later Sunday in the Latin. And um, as you know, the season of Lent is all about, it, it's somber, it's subdued as we prepare ourselves for the joy of the season to come of Easter. But today, we are allowed to celebrate a little bit. And um, so the reason for that is there's an ancient text from Isaiah that was attached to this Sunday uh, from, you know, centuries ago. I believe it's Isaiah 66 where it says, Rejoice, O Jerusalem. So that's why this Sunday we can have a little bit of celebrating and it's perfectly fine to do so. So just a couple of quick announcements this morning. First of all, um, the, all of the usual Zoom gatherings are happening this week, the ones that have already been, been in effect. Um, check the bulletin for details to see what dates they are on and all of that and the times. And if you have not connected with those yet, you still can. It's perfectly fine to just jump in and, and, uh, uh, and join. There are details in the bulletin as to how you can do that. And, and if you have any questions, please contact Ern or Brandy, and they, can, they will gladly walk you through the process of how you can connect in to these various activities. Uh, let's see here. Okay, we are going to be moving. Uh, we're going to have today a hymn when we don't normally have a hymn. So we have sermon. So in your bulletin, we're going to move one. So it, it, it goes sermon. It goes hymn of the day, which will be that same one. Then it goes Apostles' Creed. Then it goes Prayers of Intercession. Then we're going to have the hymn that we were going to sing at the end. We're going to put it there. I'll announce it as we get to that point so, so that you remember that. I had Jacob move it so that the words to that hymn will be on the screen when we get there. So thank you, Jacob, for that. It's good to have somebody that knows this tech stuff really good. They can make a change like that. I'd still be back there struggling away. And we'll see today if somebody comes walking in late because of the time switch. Congratulations to all of you. I'm proud of myself for being here and waking up on time. Um, and because it's Joy Sunday, I thought I would give just a little lighthearted uh, thing concerning our time guide that we go through every, you know, in the spring and fall. If you use your smartphone, if you use your phone a lot to tell the time, then when it comes to things like this, daylight savings time and whatnot, uh, you just leave it alone. It just does its magic, right? If you use a sundial to tell time, then you're going to have to all you're going to have to move one house to the left. Okay, that's how you keep track of these things. So if you have any neighbors that use the sundial to tell time, you got to move one house to the left. If you use the clock the, the clock on your oven to tell time. Well, then you're going to have to get a master's in engineering, uh, electronic engineering, to learn how to do that, or just get a hammer, right? <laughs> if you use your vehicle, the time in your vehicle, if that's your main way of telling time, it's just not worth the hassle. Just wait six months, and it will be good again. <laughs> so I hope that this information here has helped you out a little bit here today. That is all the announcements that I have. I know there are other announcements to come, and for those, I'm going to call forward Church President George Sawatsky. Good morning. morning. I'll have a couple of dates in here just to give you some sense of sequences, the way things... uh, move and how fast they move. Just 10 days ago on March the 4th, Manitoba Health announced new guidelines for faith groups. They increased the number of people that were allowed inside from 10% of capacity or 50 people to 100 or 25%, whichever was the lower. At the same time, they made it mandatory that everyone except the officiant had to wear a mask at all times. 
On that same day, Reverend Melissa, on our behalf, sent an email to Calvin Gertson's office asking for clarification on whether we could sing because masks were required. Their immediate reply was that they could not answer our questions until the order was written and published. On Tuesday, that's this last Tuesday, March 9th was our council meeting and we had not received any further comments from them, so council went with the information that we had. Sometime on March the 10th, which was the day after council meeting, we did get a reply, although I didn't see it until Thursday, that singing was allowed while wearing masks. The service for this Sunday was already completed and bulletins were printed, so Pastor Terry and I decided that we would leave everything the way the congregations, the way it was set up, just let you know that you can sing along when we get to the congregational songs because we still all have to, had to wear masks. Well, during this week, Pastor Terry had advised some of our members that were, weren't coming because they did not feel safe if we weren't wearing masks and that everyone had to wear a mask at all times. Some indicated to him that they would then probably come because we're all wearing masks. This last Friday at 12 noon, the chief medical officer, Dr. Rosen, announced that congregants did not have to wear masks while seated and properly distances, but put them on for singing. Because some of our members were told that everyone would be wearing masks today, and had indicated that they might then come, we are asking you to please be so kind to keep your masks on during the whole service. This is just out of respect for those people. During the week, I will try and consult with council as to what we should do going forward. My understanding is that we have to wear masks coming in and leaving. We can take it off while seated, we have to put it back on for singing. Does that mean everyone or only the ones that want to sing? I am sure we will be receiving some feedback from you and we appreciate that. But I'm also sure that it might not be consistent. Your pastor and staff and council appreciate the support that you have given in trying to keep everyone safe and comfortable where possible. So just one last item. After the service, please be seated and wait for the ushers to usher you out. They will start from the back so you don't have to walk past too many people. And remember, you still have to have six feet of space between each other when talking to people outside of your immediate household. Thank you. Thank you very much, George. Well said, as usual. And um, so there you have it. Today we have Joy Sunday, and we are going to be able to do something we have not been able to do in here for, seems like forever. We are going to sing today. I don't know what it is like to sing with a mask on, but uh, I don't even know if that matters. We'll just sing. And uh, so now maybe it makes sense as to why we moved a hymn up in that place where we don't normally have one, more on that later. Are there any other announcements to come from the congregation this morning? Seeing there are no further announcements, I invite the congregation to rise as you are able as we continue with the gathering, which is based on today's Psalm 107. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for He is good, for His steadfast love endures forever. And gathered in from the lands, from east and from the west, from the north and from the south. They loathed any kind of food, and they drew near to the gates of death. And 
He sent out his word and healed them and delivered them from destruction. And let them offer thanksgiving sacrifices and tell of his deeds with songs of joy. We continue with confession and forgiveness. Redeeming God, because you are filled with mercy and grace, we can trust you to forgive our sins as we confess them before you now. We bow before your cross and admit we are held captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We are not able to love in the way you intended, nor are we able to live in the way you dreamed for the world you created. Your plan to save and reconcile the world finds its fulfillment in the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Because of what he bore for our sakes, our sin is forgiven and death is defeated. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Please join me now as we pray together today's prayer of the day. Holy God, rich in mercy, by the humiliation of your Son, you lifted up this fallen world and rescued us from the hopelessness of death. Lead us into your light, that all our deeds may reflect your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our gathering hymn this morning is Beneath the cross of Jesus, and just a quick note, as George said, the service was already prepared, so there are two verses to that hymn on the screen, and instead of asking Brandy to shuffle really quickly and change everything, uh, we'll be singing just those two verses, so beneath the cross of Jesus, let's raise up our, our uh, get our abdomens and our diaphragms all practiced up and, and sing that beautiful hymn. I don't know how that sounded from your perspective, but from my, my perspective, that was just amazing. So nice to hear that singing again. I'm going to invite the congregation to please be seated as we continue with the reading of God's Word. Good morning. Our first reading is from Nor Numbers 21 verses 4 to 9. From Mount Hor, they set out by the way to the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. But the people became impatient on the way. The people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water, and we detest this miserable food. Then the Lord sent poisonous serpents among the people, and they bit the people, so that many Israelites died. The people came to Moses and said, 
We have sinned by speaking against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord to take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said to Moses, Make a poisonous serpent and set it on a pole, and everyone who is bitten shall look at it and live. So Moses made a serpent of bronze and put it on a pole. And whenever a serpent bit someone, that person would look at the serpent of bronze and live. The word of the Lord. Our second reading is from Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 to 10. You were dead through the trespasses and sins in which you once lived, following the course of this world, following the ruler of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work among those who are disobedient. All of us once lived among them in the passions of our flesh, following the desires of flesh and senses, and we were by nature children of wrath, like everyone else. But God, who is rich in mercy out of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead through our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved, and raised us up with him, and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the ages to come he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing, it is the gift of God, not the result of works, so that no one may boast, for we are what he has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the third chapter. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already, because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world, and people love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light and do not come to the light, so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. This is the gospel of the Lord. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Please be seated. You know, during this pandemic, many people, many people, have discovered or rediscovered outdoor activities. Many people have flocked to the great outdoors, getting involved in hiking, jogging, biking, camping, skating, or skiing, just to name a few activities. These kinds of things have become so popular that it was very hard to purchase certain items since already last summer. The stores are just sold out. After a lot of phone calls and website browsing, my wife and I were lucky enough to find a set of cross-country skis for each of us. And since we purchased those skis last fall, we have been out on the trails this winter as often as we could. Now, we are average skiers at best. But it didn't take long for us to find our rhythm on the trails. We both used to ski a little bit, and it came back fairly good. 
Eventually, we became brave enough to try out the more difficult trails, which, of course, have hills on them. There's certain lessons in school, you know, you just never forget. This one we were quickly reminded of. What, what goes up must come down. You kind of know where I'm going with this, don't you? When you come down a hill zipping along, it's a bit of a thrill. And when you do it properly, you want to find another hill and do it all over again. But when you don't do it properly, it isn't such a great experience. Let me tell you, it is not a good feeling when you lose control. And I want to make it perfectly clear that is not me in that picture. Not because somebody's falling, but because I wouldn't dress like that to go skiing. I wouldn't do that to people around me. It's not a good feeling when you lose control. When that moment comes when you realize that you are no longer in control of the situation and that you are definitely going to fall. It's in those moments when you are humbled and you realize that you aren't 10 feet tall and bulletproof just because you have a pair of shiny new skis on your feet. Losing control is not a good thing. Being in control is a good thing. Most people like to be in control of things one way or the other. You had control over which service you wanted to come to today. Right? You have control over how you spend the rest of the day. Being in control gives us feelings of safety, comfort, and security. Most people would rather drive a vehicle than be a passenger because they're in control. There's exceptions to the rule, but most people would. Most people would rather plan a vacation from beginning to end as opposed to just playing it by ear and seeing what happens. Having everything planned out provides a sense of control and comfort for some people. Did you hear a verse in today's gospel reading that seemed kind of familiar? I'm sure you did. Good old John 3.16. It's probably the most famous verse in the entire Bible. Even many non-churchgoers have it memorized. If you like watching sports events on TV at one time or another, you probably noticed someone holding a sign that says, you guessed it, John 3.16. For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son, so that everyone who believes in Him may not perish, but may have eternal life. As I said, this is probably the most famous verse in the Bible. But you know what? It may not be our favorite verse in the Bible. Many people have issues with this verse. And they find that it brings them discomfort rather than comfort. Why? Well, notice that it says, so that everyone who believes in Him may have eternal life. If this is the only verse in the Bible that you know. It makes you wonder what happens to those who don't believe. It creates a kind of us versus them scenario. Believers versus unbelievers. Saved versus unsaved. This kind of thing, it leaves some people uncomfortable. Because it leaves them wondering, well, I wonder what side am I really on here? But when we, when we continue to read on in that, read, in that gospel reading, we see that Jesus states that God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world. He did not send the Son to condemn the world. But in order that the world might be saved through Him. Period. When we read even farther, we see that the judgment to come is not punishment but instead the crisis that comes to those who will 
not come out of the darkness for fear of the light. It's not judgment as punishment, but judgment as crisis, as tragedy, as loss. And God comes in love to redeem that loss, to turn tragedy into victory, and demonstrate true power through sheer vulnerability and sacrifice. Last Sunday, Reverend Melissa talked about the foolishness of the cross. And this is what it refers to. God's victory through the Son is achieved through weakness and sacrifice, not through power and might. That is the reason that for some, John 3.16 is not their favorite verse. Because our world... And quite often our lives operate according to the belief that security comes not through sacrifice and being vulnerable, but through power. It's not anyone's fault. It's just the way the world works, and we all get wrapped up in it. We live in a world that seeks security not only through power, but through wealth and consumption. It's not our fault, just the way the world works. And we are taught from a very early age to avoid being vulnerable. If you're vulnerable, somebody will just knock you over. They'll walk all over you. So no wonder many people look at things like sacrifice. Loving our enemies and trusting in someone else as being foolish. No wonder they think that. It's better to be in control ourselves, isn't it? There's another reason why John 3.16 may not be our favorite verse. And that's because of the claim that it makes on us. Notice that God doesn't ask our permission first before sending Jesus to die for us. He doesn't say, would you mind if? Just think for a moment of the claim a person has on us once they've saved our lives. In the face of such love, such sacrifice, we must surrender all of our own claims. Think about what we owe a person who has died so that we might live without even asking us, without us even having any sort of control over it. I read somewhere about a pastor who was thinking along these lines and said that if he could, if he could, he would like to add four words to a baptism. I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, like it or not. I would like to share a story with you about a father who was putting his six-year-old son to bed. So, The father is putting him to bed earlier than Jeffrey felt he should be going to bed. And let me tell you, Jeffrey was upset. He was so upset at his dad that he said, Daddy, I hate you. Jeffrey's father replied, I'm sorry you feel that way, but I love you. Jeffrey's response to to those words from his dad were, Don't say that. I'm sorry, Jeffrey, but it's true. I love you. Don't, his son protested. Don't say that again. At which point, Jeffrey's father said, Jeffrey, I love you. Like it or not. Now, why was Jeffrey protesting his father's love? It's because he realized that he could not control his father's love and twist it to his advantage. In the face of such love, there is no bargaining. 
And in the end, no control whatsoever. If his dad had said, Jeffrey, if you eat all your vegetables, you can stay up later. Or if he said, Jeffrey, if you, know, if, if you stay up later tonight, you have to go to bed earlier tomorrow night. If that's what would have happened, then Jeffrey would have been a player, right? He would have exercised some measure of control over the situation and over his dad. But in the face of unconditional love, we are powerless. Yes, perhaps we can choose to accept it or not. Perhaps we can even run away from it. But we cannot influence it. We cannot manipulate it. We cannot control it. In the face of this kind of love, we are powerless. And only when we've died to all of our delusions of actually being in control in some way, do we realize that such loss of control, such loss of power, is actually life. You see, God's love is relentless. And so our Heavenly Father's love will continue to chase after us, to chase after our loved ones, seeking to hold on to us and redeem us all the days of our lives. Whether we like it or not. So maybe John 3.16 is a verse that, when we really look at it, might terrify us and how it leaves us powerless in a world that insists in the gathering of power. And then again, maybe as we remember God's relentless love, we might also see something else. That this is the one relationship in our lives that we cannot mess up. We cannot mess it up. Because God created it. God maintains it. And He will bring it to a good end. All through the power of His sacrificial and relentless love. Yes, it might be good to be in control when coming down a hill on a pair of skis. But when it comes to the relentless, perfect love of God for you and I, we have no control over it. And I, for one, am perfectly fine with that. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please join me now as we sing three verses of Love Divine, All Loves Excelling.
invite the congregation to please rise as you are able as we confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. And together we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Renewed in the promises of baptism, let us now pray for the church, the world, and for all who are in need. Gracious God, we pray for the church. Direct and guide us in following your will. Grant us clarity in the midst of confusion and give us courage in the face of challenge. Make us passionate to share your gospel. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creator God, we pray for the world you so deeply love. We pray for wilderness places, for deserts and mountains, fruit trees and gardens. We pray for places devastated by flooding or drought, by wind, fire or earthquake. Restore damaged habitats and protect fragile environments. Lord, in your mercy. God of peace, we pray for the nations. Grant wisdom to our leaders. Teach us to resolve conflicts without violence. Strengthen those who protect human rights and civil liberties. Breathe your peace into places ravaged by war and bring sustenance into places dealing with famine and hunger. Lord, in your mercy. God of mercy, we pray for those in need, for those who suffer in mind, body, or spirit. We lift up in our prayers this morning those who have asked us to pray for them. Albert Keane, Margaret Keane, Chris Funk, Janet Harder, Peter Harder, Laura Heckert, Tina Heckert, Wanda Hain, Marlene Clausen, Jennifer Kowalik, Henrietta Reimer, Anne Renz, Helmuth Renz, Joan Schultz, and Jennifer Stepaniak. May each one feel the comfort, comfort of your compassionate embrace this day, Lord, in your mercy. Redeeming God, we pray for this assembly. We pray for those who make quilts and gather supplies for ministries to help bring comfort to those in need, for prayer ministries, and for all those who volunteer their time, talents, and treasures for the sake of the gospel. Lord, in your mercy. Eternal God, with thanksgiving, we remember those who have died in faith, especially those whom we have known and loved. Bring us with them to the fulfillment of your promise of life eternal with you, Lord, in your mercy. All these things and whatever else you see that we need, we entrust to your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated at this time as we will now sing three verses, as I mentioned earlier, of Lift High the Cross.
Please rise once again as you are able. And please join me now as we pray together today's prayer of blessing. Heavenly Father, your only Son was lifted up upon the cross to bring the world salvation. Accept the praise and thanksgiving we feel in our hearts through all that we offer you this day. Amen. We will now take a moment to prepare the table for communion. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty, and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. You call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast that renewed in the gift of baptism we may come to the fullness of your grace. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your holy name. Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people. For the forgiveness of sin, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. And now let us pray, as our Savior has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and glory. You know, it's nice to be in control in some ways in our lives. It's like coming down a hill skiing. But there's some things in our lives that we just can't do. And our Lord was lifted up on that cross. His blood was shed. His body was broken so that we might live. So as you come to the table today, let it be a wonderful reminder that in this, the Lord has control. And I think we would gladly give that over to him. So with thankful hearts, come to the Lord's table today. All are welcome at his table. Pray, given for you. 
body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you.
invite the congregation to please rise as you are able. And now may the precious body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in His grace. Let us pray. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us through this gift in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Receive the blessings of our Lord. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you with grace and with mercy. And may the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Just a quick couple of announcements. Uh, first of all, this coming Wednesday night at 7.30 here, um, Jacob and some of the youth are going to be leading our midweek Latin service. If you want to check that out, um, I'm looking forward to seeing what they have prepared for us. So um, this coming Wednesday night at 7.30. Also, um, George, please correct me if I'm wrong, but I think, as, as George mentioned, council will meet next Wednesday or next week, early next week, and let decide what we're going to do with the Mass going forward. Um, so I think the best we can say to do is to keep checking our website and Facebook page for that announcement. Once it becomes, once council decides, we'll get Brandy to put it on our social media uh, platforms. And uh, that's, just keep checking there and then you will see what, we, what we're going to be up to next Sunday and going forward. Um, so, as you know, we have not been able to sing for whew, several months. A long time. And it really, really feels good for me to hear voices singing uh, today. And I thought to myself, you know, that the reason why we moved that one hymn to that place where it usually isn't is because I want to sing a particular hymn right now. I'm not going to do a solo for you. That's not the kind of singing we want to hear. But uh, what I thought we would do is, be, is, there's one hymn that came to mind this morning because, as I mentioned before, and I know Reverend Melissa has mentioned it too, singing is a form of prayer. It's a way of connecting ourselves to God. It's, and it's, it's a... It's a praise. It's, it's, a, it's a worship thing. It, and it, just, it sometimes feels like our souls are being starved. Our souls need to sing. So I thought to myself this morning, you know, what hymn could we put here at the end of this day? And so I thought, well, there's one, one verse comes to mind. It's on the, the chorus, I believe. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. So I think if we, if we had hymn books in front of you, it's a hymn that you would all know, 856. Um, and it's a hymn that we all have heard many, many times before. And many of you will have it memorized. And of course, you know I'm talking about how great thou art. We don't know what we're going to be doing next week. We may be singing, we may not be singing. So why don't we take advantage of this opportunity? So just in case you have not got the words memorized or you know the order of the verses or how they go, uh, Eleanor and Gwen are going to be our song leaders today, so they will help us to, once you hear a couple of words, I'm sure it will just come to you. So let's sing our praises to our great God, how great thou art.
people are behind the sound booth are oh, magically there the words are <laughs> thank you jacob so what a beautiful day the lord has made let us let us do that my friends wishing you all a wonderful sabbath day go in peace for christ goes with you Thanks. Thanks.